Governing climate change is one of the most important and urgent issues facing the world today. Typically, we think about this as being solved by world leaders, meeting together every year or so, where they make agreements about effective global responses. For example, think of the Kyoto Protocol in 2005, the Copenhagen meeting in 2009, and the Paris Agreement in 2015. But we know that this doesn't always work. Negotiation often takes a very long time, and getting agreement can be extremely difficult. International efforts towards a global agreement have been going on for decades and have been through both success and failure. But is global level negotiation the only way in which climate change is being addressed? At the same time as the global negotiations have been unfolding, there have also been many forms of climate initiatives and actions occurring in highly diverse ways. For example, actions have been occurring in different sectors such as energy production and use, mobility and urban design, and in global supply chains. Actions have also been occurring across different levels, including at the property scale, within cities and regions, as well as globally. A variety of novel transnational initiatives are also emerging. For example, cities sharing knowledge and taking action together, and businesses and NGOs developing new standards for the way businesses operate under climate change. However, new questions arise about how we can approach this new reality of climate change governance, where action is happening in many different places, involving many different actors at the same time. The lens of polycentricity provides a novel way of looking at this governance landscape, where there are multiple independent but interconnected centres of decision making. Researchers in the European Cost Action Network, InnoGov, Innovations in Climate Governance, have identified five core propositions of polycentric governance thinking, which they critically explore. Firstly, the emergence of governance initiatives at a local level through processes of self-organisation. Secondly, mutual adjustment between constituent units of a governance system, which spontaneously interact with one another. Thirdly, the role of experimentation in facilitating governance innovation and learning about what works. Fourthly, the importance of trust, which may build up more quickly when units can self-organise, thereby increasing collective ambitions. Finally, the observation that local initiatives are likel likely to work best when they are bound by an overarching set of rules that enshrine the goals to be achieved and allow conflicts to be resolved. These are the topics that we will explore in this new open online course on polycentric climate change governance. Through this course, you will gain a comprehensive overview of the diverse ways in which climate change is being governed at different scales, by different actors and through different approaches, and how this together creates a broader polycentric climate governance system. We will look at the opportunities and challenges that the lens of polycentricity provides for describing, analysing and improving climate change governance. We very much look forward to welcoming you to this course.